Vaccines are turning the tide, but they're not without risks, especially for women. There have been rare cases of blood clotting, even fatal ones, leading some governments to slow down vaccinations. We have now today chosen to continue our vaccine rollout without AstraZeneca. But each delay puts more lives at risk as the coronavirus spreads. It's a balancing act between speed and caution in the fight against COVID-19. The risk of dying from COVID is much higher than getting a blood clot from a vaccine. But even more concerning is a new report from Oxford University that shows catching the coronavirus puts you at even more risk of a deadly blood clot. In a moment, we'll talk to a vaccine scientist at Johns Hopkins University. First, this report. AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vector vaccine has hardly been out of the headlines since last December. Until now, it's been instrumental in the success of the UK's vaccination program. But from now on, its use there will be restricted to those over 30 years of age. There have been worries in the European Union about its effectiveness and potential side effects. Germany initially restricted its use to under 65s. Now Berlin is recommending it purely for over 60s. Those worries were compounded by several cases of a rare thrombosis type following AstraZeneca vaccinations, some of them fatal. The European Medicines Agency in Amsterdam felt it was time to take a stance on the jab. Its director stressing that the benefits of the antiviral agent far outweigh any risks. This vaccine has proven to be highly effective. It prevents sev severe disease and hospitalization and it is saving lives. Vaccination is extremely important in helping us in the fight against COVID-19 and we need to use the vaccines we have to protect us from the devastating effects. Scientists have been investigating the reports and circumstances of the thromboses. Britain's Medicines and Healthcare Regulator Agency says 20 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine had been administered by the end of March, with 79 cases of a thrombosis later reported, 19 of which were fatal. The cause is thought to be a rare immune reaction. Most of them presented some two weeks after inoculation. There are no apparent risk groups such as age or sex. Several countries like Germany, France and Canada have tightened restrictions on the use of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine. Others have suspended it totally, waiting for the EMA's verdict. It has now recommended the continued unrestricted use of the AstraZeneca jab, regardless of any rare cases of thrombosis. So mixed messages there about vaccine safety. To unpack this, let's bring in Corso Talachi, a vaccine scientist and infectious disease physician at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. So let's start with AstraZeneca. As, as we heard, that's being given to more than half the adults in Britain and is credited with saving tens of thousands of lives. I'd gladly take it, but authorities here in Germany and other countries are blocking its use and offering no timely alternative. Isn't that in itself putting people's lives in danger? So when you have a pandemic that's out of control, like we have with the COVID-19 pandemic, then any facts, then you have to weigh the risks and benefits of any available preventive, um, such as a vaccine or a treatment. And for the AstraZeneca vaccine, it has been shown to have saved millions of lives already. Um, and so the the potential benefits might outweigh any risks. Now, there are some very serious risks associated with it in very, very rare circumstances. Um, and I think, I think each country, but also each individual, needs to be able to weigh that risk-benefit mm -hmm. equation for themselves to decide whether or not they're willing to take that risk for the, potential, for the protection against the virus. When you have a vaccine that's available and that's not being used, people can die. And that, that's something that each, each government and each person needs to weigh. And this isn't only a problem with AstraZeneca. We've now got Johnson & Johnson, six million immunized in the United States, and yet it's on hold because six people may have had side effects. Isn't one in a million an acceptable risk level during uh, times like these? So I think that the equation in the United States is a little bit different because 
We vaccinated so many of our high-risk individuals already, and we have two other approved vaccines that are that are more available than the Johnson and Johnson vaccine even is. Um, and I and I think whereas Europe has been gathering information about the AstraZeneca vaccine for several weeks, we are just starting to learn about the any potential risk associated with the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And so I think. Uh, the pause is to gather that information to truly understand what that risk is. Is it one in a million or is there something higher? Is it even um, associated, is the, the clots that we saw with, with in those unfortunate women associated with it? And so I think the, um, the, the pause is appropriate while we gather that information and make a decision about the risk benefits. But I think in places where there's the virus is increasing in terms of the transmission and there is no alternative vaccine that it should be seriously considered to use this vaccine while that data is being gathered. Um, in the U.S., the calculus is a little bit different because we do have two alternative vaccines that don't seem to have that same risk. The strange thing, though, is that, and, and this is what will get many people, especially women, worried about this, is that those people affected by clotting were women in a certain age group, and it's been a, a similar profile for AstraZeneca as well. So why is it being blocked for everyone or everyone under 60 or so? I am... Um, that is probably uh, due to logistics and programmatic issues, but also because... While we're gathering that information, we need to understand better what that risk is and who truly is at risk. While the majority of people who have been affected so far seem to be women, um, there were men in Europe who have had this unusual rare blood clot happen. Mm -hmm. um, there was one man in the trial um, in the United States who had this unusual blood clot um, occur. And so we need to gather that information and understand the process better and who truly is at risk to be able to maybe target the vaccines at people who are at lower risk. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that you say that because there's a lot of adverse events from vaccines that seem to particularly affect women mm. and especially women in their reproductive years. Um, and that's probably because our hormones are different than in the pre and post reproductive period and also from men. Um, and that may put us at, um, that may give us a, an advantage or a benefit, but they may also put us at um, some increased risk from the adverse events. If you look at the anaphylaxis cases that are happening after the mRNA vaccines in the United States, the vast majority of them are happening in women as well. Um, so Can there's just, there's a difference in the biology um, yeah. between men and women that we're just starting Understand. Can we go as far as saying that vector vaccines could be the problem? In terms of the, the clotting that's been seen? Exactly, yeah. Or in terms of adverse events? In, in terms of clotting and or adverse events. So each vaccine is going to have its... its different adverse events. Each vaccine mm -hmm. platform has different kinds of adverse events that happen. Um, and so for the vectored vaccines, um, especially for AstraZeneca, potentially for, for Johnson & Johnson as well, it looks like clotting may be an increased risk factor um, that we didn't see with the mRNA vaccines. And in the United States, over 100 million people have now been vaccinated with one of the two mRNA vaccines without the same sort of signal that we've seen with the um, with the with the ad with the adenovirus vaccines. But this ne hasn't necessarily been seen with other adenovirus vaccines in the past. So we need to better understand what is happening. And I think that this pause allows scientists and researchers to really dig deep into each of these cases to better understand what's happening and also to understand the mechanisms a little bit better. And it's been fantastic having you on the show explaining to us what all this means. Koso Talat of Johns Hopkins University, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you very much. Take care. Whatever the risks, vaccines are here to stay for now. More on that from Derek Williams. Will we only have to be vaccinated once, or will we need regular booster shots? Once again, the straightforward answer is, we don't know yet. But a lot of experts do think 
it's very likely that even fully vaccinated people will need booster shots in the future. Um, there are a couple of different reasons why that might become necessary. The first involves the fact that the vaccines we're using now have been approved for emergency use because they were safe in the vast majority of people who've gotten them and also um, extremely effective, at least in the short term. But we still don't know how long that effectiveness on average will last. Don't forget, it's been under a year since the very first subjects in trials um, received their first shots. But based on what we know about naturally acquired immunity to the disease and what we know about other coronaviruses, the general expectation among immunologists appears to be that most vaccinated people will remain largely immune to COVID-19 for at least six months and likely retain at least some immunity for a year or two, assuming the virus doesn't mutate faster than we think. However, nearly all the experts I've read now also think that down the line, variants of SARS-CoV-2 will change enough that we'll have to modify current vaccines at some point. So the companies that make them are already in trials looking at possible ways to prolong vaccine-induced immunity. And a lot of those trials will involve giving test subjects booster shots of tweaked vaccines. You heard it from Jarek Williams. I'm Ben Fazulin. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you again soon.